to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study. So we'll be looking at Acts chapter 12 tonight. We're going to be talking about prayer, talking about facing problems. And so uh, actually it's in preparation for our miracle service this Sunday night. And uh, just want to encourage you in this message. So let's read in Acts 12 verse 1. And it says this about this time, King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. This is James and John are the brothers, the fishermen that followed Jesus. He has James put to death by the sword. Verse number three, when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. He had Peter arrested. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But after arresting him, he put him in prison, handed him over to uh, be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So we're talking about this, and man, this is a great story. This is one of the greatest miracles we have in the book of Acts. Uh, Peter has a major problem. Peter's been arrested. Herod's serious about having him put to death. Had not been for the Passover holidays, Peter would already be dead. But he's in prison until after the holidays because couldn't do that. And this was actually the Jews were pleased with him putting James to death. So the Jews could not attend uh, the trial and all that through the Passover holidays. So he's having to wait. So Peter's in prison. And the word of God tells us he literally is, is in a not life and death situation. He's facing a death situation. Uh, his death is certain. Herod is going to have him put to death. The trial is literally just going to be a preliminary trial to bring a lot of attention and focus. The Jews are going to be very supportive of Herod. That uh, Those Jews that are uh, persecuting the church at that time, those that are the leadership, the Sanhedrin, the priest, uh, the Pharisees, all those are just caught up in this thing. So he's really getting, it's a political move to gather a lot of political strength and public opinion at that time. So literally, Peter is facing death in just a matter of days. And it says this, that while verse number six says, that night, the night before Herod was to bring Peter to trial, Peter was sleeping between two guards, bound with two chains, and sentry stood guard at the entrance. Think about this. Peter was personally chained between two guards. He's in a cell, in a prison cell, in the inner prison. There's a guard on his right. He's chained. Peter's wrist is chained to this soldier's wrist. Guard on his left. Peter's wrist chained to this soldier's wrist. So here is Peter with two chains, one on each wrist, chained to two different soldiers inside of a locked cell. Outside of that cell are two more soldiers who are guarding him. And there's four groups of four soldiers. That means that they're rotating every four hours, basically in and out, and they're watching him, and he's going to be put to death. And there's nothing he can do about it. So recognize this. This is extreme measures. Not only that, you've got to recognize that he's also in prison. There, there's no chance of escape. The natural obstacles are insurmountable. He is guarded, chained literally to two guards, guarded again by two more, that's four guards, inside of a cell, inside of a locked prison cell, and then inside of the locked prison. Uh, he's watched 24 hours a day, every second of every day. And as we do this, we recognize that the Bible gives these accurate details to let us understand how, how serious his circumstances are, how unchangeable his circumstances are in the natural, in the fact that they're impossible in the natural, it's hopeless in the natural. And, and during this time, we recognize that Peter is sleeping between these guards. That it's at night and Peter's asleep, which is a powerful testimony that Peter looks at his circumstances and he's, I believe, he's yielded to God's will. Lord, if it's for me to live, then you will make a way out. I don't see a way out in the natural. Well, I've seen you do the impossible before. If it's your will for me to die, then I'm ready to go be with you in glory. If I'm to stay, I'll stay and keep doing ministry. Lord, I trust you in this. And so we see that he is in this situation, but he has put his trust. He's able to rest in this situation. You know, many of us would be so stressed we couldn't rest. 
We couldn't have peace. But Peter's at that place of peace. He's able to sleep in the storm because he's confident of the God he serves. He's put it in his hand. We skip verse 5. I did intentionally. Let's read verse 5. And it says, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The church was only earnestly praying to God for him. Now listen, there's no way to get word into Peter. The, the disciples can't get word to him. He's, he's locked up in Herod's prison, guarded by Roman soldiers who hate Jews and, and, and hate the disciples. They just, they're just they not going to be letting anybody in. Peter doesn't have an idea. But Peter's resting in the fact that he trusts God. But the church is earnestly praying. The word here, earnestly, is this word for stretching out all the way for something. Stretching all the way to get something. Stretching with everything. It would be stretching like a runner towards the finish line. An athlete. It would be stretching with everything you have to move an obstacle. They're, they're literally putting everything into it. It's the word that Luke also uses in Luke 22 verse 44 to emphasize Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's the same word that Peter did. That, that the church is praying, and, and it's that word used for Jesus praying earnestly, sincerely, giving it all until the blood popped out and it ran off his face. And it's, you got to realize this intensity, but the church is praying and pressing in. Literally is what it means. They, they're extending, they're stretching themselves, they're giving it their all. And Peter's sleeping, the church is praying, and what? God moves at just the right time. Verse number 7, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell and he struck Peter on his side, woke him up and said, get up quickly. And he said, and as he said this to him, what? The chains fell off Peter's wrist. Listen, there's no problem that God can't deal with. The multiple chains on him. Multiple guards on him. Multiple doors locked. All these obstacles, all these hindrances in the natural that are humanly impossible. But when God gets ready to move, nothing is impossible for God. But it's not just God getting ready to move. God is moving in response to the people's prayer. The church is earnestly praying. And Peter is there and he's, he is trusting God. Because he cannot change his circumstances. He can trust God. Peter thinks he's seeing a vision. His chains fell off. And he literally thinks it's a vision. And he said, the angel tells him, get up, put your clothes on, put your shoes on, follow me. And, and they walk out the cell. And they walk past the guards. The first set of guards. The second set of guards. It tells us that in detail. And they walk through the, the, the doors there. And then they walk out to the large gates of the prison that are iron gates that are locked. And it says they opened automatically on their own. They swung open to make way for the angel, for Peter to move out of them and be released and free. This just tells us the fact of what God can do. Those things that say we'll never open, we'll never move, we'll never change. When God gets ready and God declares it, they will move, they will change, they will open. Who recognizes Peter walks about a block down the street here it is late at night. The angel all of a sudden is gone. And Peter stops and realizes it's not a vision. He realizes that he's literally outside. Maybe he reached down and touched the street. Maybe, you know, went over and touched the bill. We don't know, but he realized, I, God has delivered me from the hand of Herod. God has delivered me from the hands of the Jews that were going to put me to death. God has delivered me. He is set free. The thing is this. We recognize that Peter's situation mirrors the things we face today. The enemy brings us into places of binding us up with sickness or disease or, or financial debt that, that we were being good stewards of, but problems overtook us. Or maybe you messed up and, and you've got financial problems that, that you created. But you know what it is? We cry out to God and, and we earnestly pray to Him and press Him, realizing He's the only answer like the church. The church was praying and they were stretching themselves and they're putting everything into it and they were pushing through. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Next Sunday night, August the 8th, we'll come together in the PM service to have a time of praise and worship. Bring your children, bring your kids. We want, to, we want them to be a part of the worship service. And we're going to worship and then we're going to pray for people with needs. We're going to, we're going to press into God. I want you to begin this week. I'm asking you to miss a meal for a miracle. 
I've already done my part in that. I'm going to do more. But I'm asking you, join me in missing a meal for a miracle. Let's press into God. Let's, let's earnestly stretch out ourselves in faith, believing that nothing is impossible with God. The same God that released Peter from, from being chained between two guards. The same God that opened prison doors. The, the chains fell off. That's the same God we serve. We're praying to the same God, and He is our Father. He is our Father. You know what? Some people are like Peter. Peter had his hands full. His left hand shackled to this situation. His right hand shackled to this situation. He had more than he could handle besides all the other stuff that he is dealing with. You know what? Sometimes we have a medical issue, and when medical problems come, the, the medical bills. You know, it comes to family problems, possibly. It comes to the fact that we can't work. Whatever it is, we, we get overwhelmed. But nothing is impossible with God. Let's pray. Let's press in. Our God is faithful. Let's, as I preach Sunday, recognize your rights. Your God-given rights in Christ Jesus our Lord. Rights as children of God. Inherit rights. Let's pray. Let's petition. Let's press in. Maybe you don't have a need. Praise God. Praying for others, inviting people. We want to see God move. And to Him be all the glory. It's not about our fasting. It's not about our pressing in a prayer. When it's all over with, this is what God has done. Peter didn't say, man, the church was praying. And whoa, what a great church group. He said, God has delivered me. God has delivered me. And we're looking to our Father to do amazing things through His Son, Jesus Christ. That the Father and the Son may be glorified. When it's all over with, it'll be about Him and what He has done. I encourage you, press in. Let's pray together. Let's come together believing that God is faithful and nothing's impossible with God. You might say, well, I've been prayed for before. I've came to these things before. Nothing's happened. You know what? God is faithful. God is faithful. We pray until something happens. That's push. Pray until something happens. Push in. Press in. We're going to do that. And we're going to see God touch. I'm so thankful for the things June Walker came up and shared Sunday morning. I shared about somebody had postponed their knee surgery. It was June Walker. And I had not had a chance to talk with her. I'd heard somewhat about it. She came up at the end of the service testifying that she would put off her surgery because her knee that had been hurting so bad it was scheduled for surgery. She had been praying because God touched and healed Jason's knees. God touched and healed Joe's foot. God touched and healed Verna's foot. God's been doing these things. He's been glorifying His Son. And she began to press in her and Dave. And she said, my, main, my pain diminished to where I've been able to walk upstairs and do things like that. And she talked to the doctor and the nurse. And they said, let's put it off. God is moving. God is touching. Let's press in. Let's overcome the obstacles. Some of you are battling the, the pain and emotional hurts and letdowns. And, uh, some of you are battling bitterness right now and disappointment. Listen, God is faithful. Let's press in. He'll set you free from that. He'll bring healing in your emotions. He can bring healing in relationships. He can bring healing physically. Nothing is impossible with God. And all things are possible to those who believe. Let's pray together right now. Father, I thank you. And I'm praying together with the church. We're wanting you to see Jesus lifted up. Jesus glorified. Your name lifted up as our Father who loves us, who cares for us. And we're asking, Lord... Sunday night, Lord God, but before then, and Lord, even after then, for lives to be touched. But we make this special time. We're making this special season to come together, Lord, making opportunity for you, O oh God, to move as we join our faith together. We come together with needs, O oh God, that need a miracle. And we come together with our faith, Lord God, that is in you, the God of miracles. And we thank you for touching ministry and moving. We thank you for the testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.